think that we should start this out by just simply stating when a creator asks me the simple question of like, how do I get started? I, I, I want to do this. I, and my answer is this. Just start. And they're worried about getting the best cameras and the best lighting and the best everything. And one of the things that I do is I give other creators this type of advice, but then I don't, <laughs> I don't take it myself. So the podcast has been held back for a number of reasons. And one of them was recently I'm missing some cords. I had to order more in and I'm like, you know what? Let's just go with whatever we got right now. Uh, I know that we're going to see reflections. I know that the camera angles kind of suck right now. I know the audio might not be on par, but if I don't start right now, I might not start the podcast up again. And I'm really upset that I haven't been able to do so. With that said, welcome back. To welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to Aquarium's Unfiltered Podcast. My fellow tank mates, in the near future like in a week from now or so i do have guests coming on before then so they're gonna get a couple episodes where it's just kind of crappy looking like this uh in a week from now though i'm going to switch the camera angles we're going to come down lower on this one those reflections up there aren't going to look at like that the side angles if you just show me and then you these will be further back because i want you to see more of everything as opposed to just like closed crop we're out in the aquarium gallery for the first time with this podcast we are finally surrounded in aquariums giving me so many things that i want to talk about but in today's podcast i want to i want to throw something in your guys's face and i mean you my fellow tank mates i got you something we got you something <laughs> And my internet search history needs to be deleted after trying to find something like this. <laughs> <laughs> but I got it, and I promised it. Do you know, do you think they can guess what it is? I don't know. It's well, been a while. Well, we mentioned it before. Well, what was the first episode that, like, I mentioned I was going to get them this? I feel like it was one of the very first ones. Right. Because when you're on a podcast, or when, I'm sorry, when you're listening to a podcast, you feel like you're, you're just there and, you know, armchair type deal. And it took me forever to find this, but I got you something. <laughs> it's really, it's really, well, welcome to my sense of humor. It's just hilarious to me. It's funny. I got you guys this. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. I'm going to bring it in closer. Remember when I said I'd get you guys a little armchair to sit in? Well, now you have one. Take a seat. <laughs> <laughs> have a seat, guys. Oh, my right Lord. right there with us. Yeah, that wasn't easy to find. I got it on Amazon, um, but like, <sighs> and it was expensive. I don't know what it, it's probably made of. If I were to guess, rich mahogany. Um, uh, you know what it's for? Probably originally. It's a dollhouse thing. No, it's like made for the dinner with schmuck Steve Carell's mouse <laughs> mouse little creature <gasps> figure. Broken. Well, way, to, way to go. Probably broken shipping, but whatever i'm just noticing it now um yeah so originally what was going to go on with this podcast is quite simple um we set up a studio in the basement i wanted to run with that for three months and then we were going to re relocate to the public aquarium building where we set up another studio and everything was going to move there but obviously that didn't happen um things uh didn't go as planned i did everything on my end nothing else happened on the other end and you know i had to vacate and uh get a lawyer um and that isn't that's not a pretty thing to go through and you yeah. know but at the end of the day um i think what happened was the podcast was supposed to we recorded 10 episodes and i felt like that should have taken us two or three months yeah. to like go through i was gonna we were gonna like upload once one once a week yeah and um I just dumped them all on them in like a month. Yeah, we got excited. Just yeah, because it was exciting <laughs> to see a channel growing and and doing that sort of thing. And but we filmed them all in like that one week and a half. Yeah, it so. was a lot of work because an episode takes like, <clears throat> you know, it could take eight to ten hours. You know, if even if it's just one hour or two hours, I mean, there's the scheduling and the booking and then the editing and promoting and uploading. All of it takes time, but I. I ultimately i didn't care but once the building happened um i had to kind of put it off to the side for a little bit 
there was no way after working all day and doing that it was going to be hard to jump into a podcast like that and yeah. um when i do these i really want them to just be a normal conversation unfiltered between aquarium hobbyists lord knows where the conversation might take us and you guys so far have been loving the podcast like absolutely phenomenal response love it uh i will mention that we did a um we had this membership thing on this channel yes um and it was for shout outs only and there's a couple of people that during the time where we just weren't making the podcast it just wasn't possible all the equipment was like packed away they were still in the members only but now that they um i like a month or two ago they stopped subscribing to that um, and it's paid memberships so they were paying for their shout outs and once they disappeared there's no record or history of who they were and um the number one thing that i spent like half an hour or 45 minutes trying to find today like who were they because i don't get emails or anything like that on the um when that happens you have to mm -hmm. like go into the data and whatnot but whoever you are that stuck around and was supporting this podcast i salute you thank you very much um that will never happen again uh what they were paying for was a shout out during the podcast yeah. um i've deleted it since because I never want that to happen again because if I have to miss something or something like that, I just put it back down to like a supporter level, which is like if you want to help the podcast and help pay for the equipment. We're still about 7000 um, in debt on the podcast, which is fine. You know, I'm not doing – this is like a hobby of mine. So I did a members only for my main channel of what are your hobbies, and I guess the podcast is one of them. Yeah. You know? getting to talk to people hang out that was do that, a, sort of that thing. was a fun conversation i was just reading off the questions for you but it was interesting to yeah. hear your answers and then there were little things i was like wanting to pitch in but i was like this isn't a podcast this is not my moment to talk <clears throat> well the problem with that was they started well, we didn't ask me anything and they were asking me like some of them were pretty basic and some are normal and some of them i've heard before and i've answered before um but some of them were like pretty personal and they were like tell me tell me something that you're okay with talking about that nobody knows yeah and i just had to open my mouth <laughs> and that and now i feel humiliated and embarrassed but it's kind of funny at the same time and i'm not but gonna say it here and it's not a, it's not a big deal yeah it's just a, they only see it now, if you need to know <laughs> yeah <laughs> go be a member <laughs> yeah there's like three or four bucks to become a member <laughs> and that one's an hour long but i think i made like over 100 posts for them now um i don't know how many videos 40 or 50 videos um Anyways, so what's happened in the last few months? I mean, um, the last podcast we uploaded was with Jason from uh, Primetime Prime Aquatics. Aquatics. Yep. Um, saw him recently in Dallas. We can yeah. get to that in a second and what really went down. Um, but uh, we're on a roll in March and April. And then I did a podcast with him as well. And what I didn't know, I lost the audio completely. Yeah. I just had him, me and him going. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time <laughs> and, and i was like i can't upload that would i guess i could do a voiceover <laughs> and guess what we said it would have been really bad but um the, the the software that i subscribe to and pay for um every month even though i haven't been using it and i'm seeing it on my credit card bill I'm like what is that i'm like why is this so expensive i'm like riverside what's that yeah so um they updated and the audio and video get separated into separate folders. I didn't know it, couldn't find it. And then I'm messing around, clicking around, found it eventually and uploaded it three months later. I saw, I ran into him and we talked. He's like, yeah, I just thought like you didn't want it up. I was like, no, it had nothing to do with you. No, it was in the DMs. I was like, hey, your episode's coming out three months later. I felt horrible. I'm like, sorry. Um, I was embarrassed to even yeah, tell, to him. tell him. Yeah. Um, like I can't find the audio. Uh, he's like, oh, I just thought you didn't like it and didn't want it up. I was like, absolutely no. not. Everything that comes on here, everything that's uploaded, especially with the guests, we have, I, I only have like a couple of rules um, and it's all for them. It's all yeah. designed to have them in mind. Give us the green light and you're up. Yeah. I mean, if there, if we say something um, or do something or talk about something that you change your mind, you have yeah. a few days before it goes up. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like it, if we can edit it out, we'll edit it out and never talk about it again. Or if you don't want the episode up at all, it just doesn't go up. And I think that's important. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it matters how much time we put into it. I think that, like, because the internet is forever. Well, especially if you get, like, on the roll talking about something and you don't realize that you've said something, like, maybe you don't want to have that on the internet out there yeah. for everyone to see because yeah. you were just talking with your buddy sort of behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah, and, you know, you kind of, your, your guards are down and whatnot. And yeah. 
you know, and some people don't respect that. They're like, no, I want the views and I'm clickbaiting this and yeah. blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bro, that's, that, there's no longevity in that. It's a bit sketchy. Yeah, and good, it is what it is. But <clears throat> what's happened since like in the past, well, obviously we're upgrading the gallery and I want to talk about some of the things that we're doing and some of the things that are planned and mm-hmm. some ideas that I have and it's whatnot. It's absolutely phenomenal out here. Oh, it's looking beautiful. It's night and day. It's nice out here. Um, the temperature is fantastic. The humidity, everything is just perfect now. Really fine tuned some things. Um, and really, oh my Lord, those, okay, we'll get to them. We'll get to you. Oh, I'm <laughs> going to so get friendly. to you. I love them. <laughs> the scats. I don't know if you guys seen that episode recently, but <sighs> Watch it. <laughs> oh, well, you were in the background yeah. listening to everything I, I was know. saying. I and was like, I was just sitting here smiling, <laughs> so happy. I was like, this is so adorable and so wholesome. Yeah, well, you made me sound like I was saying things like, oh, do do baby. Oh, <laughs> no, so no, no. Oh, do, do, do. It wasn't what happened. It was just like, it was just, it was wholesome. Just watch yeah. the video. Watch the Somebody video. commented. So to give you guys some context, we got these uh, of fish from Thailand. Um, and I think I want to make a video on this, uh, responding to some of the comments and just highlighting some of them, especially mm-hmm. from Facebook and whatnot, because a lot of people from Thailand, India, Bangladesh, uh, they follow me. I used to make videos for them so they could share it in their group, and I'd shout them out, like um, their Bangladesh Facebook group or India Facebook group. India is a massive country with a tremendous yeah. amount of people, so there's a ton of You have Facebook a lot groups. of fans from there, I think. Yeah, they yeah. love me over there. Um, and I wish I could get there it's at some your, point. Isn't it one of your highest like demographics? It's up there. Yeah. Um, obviously, United States. Yeah. Um, and I then think Australia, you have. Oh, Australia, the UK, yeah. um, Canada, and then it'll All be like over the India. Map. Like people, sometimes Canadian clubs are like, Joey, you need to do more for us. And da, 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 da. And like I did for many, many years because mm-hmm. for YouTube, I was in the organized hobby and I gave everything I could. Uh, and I sacrificed so much, and I worked so hard to promote the local hobby. And I grew my local aquarium club to be the number one aquarium club in Canada. Yeah. Um, started as a member, got on the board of directors, and then, of course, got into vice president, finally president. And then my presidency ran out. You can only be it for one year, and you can't do it back to back. It was in their bylaws. So the entire membership voted to dissolve the society and make me sole owner. Because they wanted me to run it forever. Yeah. So I did that for like another year or two until like outside sources, like people were starting to get jealous. Right. They were hacking and attacking the website. And um, I just, I couldn't take it anymore. I was like, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this passion, this drive and this love for the hobby and trying to promote it. And I'm going to dump it into my YouTube channel instead. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I gave the club the rights and ownership to four people. I felt like that was the right thing to do. Don't give it to one person. Give it to four so they can, uh, you know, share, it up. share the expenses, share share the decisions and that sort of thing. Um, and that's exactly what I did. And, uh, you know, I don't regret it. I sometimes look back because the, after I did that, the, everything, stats, everything just plummeted immediately. Because mm-hmm. um, I was doing monthly meetings. I was doing things that weren't seen in our in Atlanta, Canada ever. Mm -hmm. I was taking what I saw at other clubs and doing it with us, but mixing in social media and strategic growth strategies that, that I just seen coming at an, at an early time. Yeah. You would have grown it like crazy. Yeah. And it did really well. And, um, you know, didn't work out for me personally. I just felt like I'm, I'm giving too much. Too much. Yeah. Um, but it opened another door for you. Yeah. So what what was I talking about right before this? The the scats and the monos. Oh, so to give you context on that video. So I ordered these fish in uh, through Jeff and they come from Thailand. And um, in the bags at the airport is where we had to exchange. I had to meet his employees at the airport at like almost midnight. Yeah. And when I'm in the car, that's on the way home from uh, the airport. And I did those little clips because I didn't think I was going to have time to talk about anything once I got home because my Mm -hmm. priority was going to be on the fish. Yep. And most of them look dead in the bag. Yeah. Especially the monos. They just didn't ship well. My lord, they look beautiful tonight, though. Oh, I know. Um, their silver is just... I love that black stripe they have on there. Yeah. They're gorgeous. I They're, you I know, always forget that name of that fin on the bottom. Absolutely beautiful. Anyway, so we get them in the tank. Didn't know... We, I had to b- balance a bunch of stuff and figure out things of... Are they, uh, are they in brackish water right now? 
are they both in brackish water or are they in fresh or are they in full salt i had two tanks set up i had to troubleshoot quite a bit it was a nail biter especially for me and a lot of people said that in the comments but um the scats were like guarding yeah they're like surrounding one of the dead monos yeah which ended up surviving yeah and then some he people in the through. comments or i think it was just one comment that kind of made sense they're like i think they were just surrounding him to you know are you food yet can i eat you they were fresh out of the bag though they're not ready to eat yeah i fed them the next day yeah. um and they all readily ate but uh and then i seen comments from guys that are in thailand and they're like joey these are in our local rivers they're good eating and we just eat them and we catch them all the time and they're laughing and i'm like well, there's fish that are in my area that you would find exotic that we just eat. Mm -hmm. And we don't think much of, like, well, I mean, what are we going to really talk about? Lobsters and <laughs> <laughs> salmon, I guess, and stuff like that, I guess. Well, to them, I guess it could be pretty exotic. I don't yeah. know. I don't know if lobsters are over I there. Think, I think we have, like, some rare, like, blue lobsters or something. Aren't there like, blue lobsters in our water somewhere? At, like, yeah. Well, like, the um, town market you can or get a, You can get a full blue lobster. You yeah. can get a lobster that's red and blue or red and white and get a lobster that's has one sex on one side and a sex on the other i was to the bedford institute of oceanography which is about an hour away mm. i used to have a pretty good relationship with them where i went all the time i held an event there um and it was uh they had uh they had lobsters like that and they talked about the rarity of them and and they would say like this one's one in 20 million this is one in 10 million blah blah blah, blah. and i'm like that sounds like interesting but i feel like all we have in our water is lobster that's like if you go outside in the summer and you go to like the recycling bin and i'm like you see these you see these flies <laughs> one in 20 million and you're like well there's so many I'm like, eh, i don't know about that see that one that I has guess. a little bit of red on it that's one in 20 million you'd be like oh that's that's cool <laughs> but it's not that out of how many in shocking. total <laughs> i guess um, so recently we had to had to part ways kind of broke up sort of well that's how you felt i left you to go to dallas <laughs> he abandoned me guys <laughs> it abandoned. he does this from time to time no i'm kidding <laughs> well after being locked in my house for two years essentially um and not doing much the thought of doing an event and being out in public um really gave me horrible anxiety and i deal with anxiety yeah. anyway Yep. So I was like, I'll do this, uh -huh. but it's the last time I'm uh -huh. going to do this. And I got to say, once I got there, and because I know what these events are going to be like for me. So originally when I used to go, events are cool and stuff if you don't know anybody. Because then you can like soak it in. You can Explore see everything. everything and you get a chance to see it all. Yeah, take it yeah. all in. But I mean, it's not that fun the people that have the most fun are people that know people yeah and that's what so i went to events when i didn't know anybody and nobody knew me yeah and then i went to events when people did know me and like there wasn't like lots of fans or anything and i could film and document and i was still having fun and then it's like if i go to an event now i'm the next level of fame yeah i just don't i can't see anything i can't look at anything and i'm not mad because i'm literally seen it all and it's going to be very repetitive for me yeah um and I'm literally just there to meet people that support me. Yeah, that's, that's it. I don't, I don't that's really what you're going for in, yeah. in the first place. Um, so I decided this was going to be my last event, last time I talk, because I don't want to do any speaking mm -hmm. anymore. Um, and I, it was like I did it like a hundred times. Yeah. I, and I thought, you know, I, I just don't want to do it until I got there and I realized... It's not that I don't want to go to these events anymore. It's just that I don't want the responsibilities. Case in point, um, I just get... So when I go to an event... So I arrive Saturday. The doors open. Um, I got there shortly after the VIPs. Yeah. Um, and there's not a ton of people there. There's only like 600 before like the thousands came in. I had enough time to walk from the entrance to where I was... Uh, supposed to kind of be and on schedule like yeah like go there because in an hour you have to do like this live stream right and i didn't want to do live stream anyways yeah but i did it 
But the reason why, too, I think you should explain. Well, yeah, and I mean, like, so once I get there. anyone who's not there, like, the sort of explain the behind the scenes, I feel like. Yeah, so if you watch these live streams and you yeah. see, like, me make them really short or something yeah. like that, or then I, I'm like, okay, well, I got to go now. Yeah. It's because I'm so, I'm booked so close to everything. And, so I get yeah. there. I'm trying. I'm trying to get there. Yeah. So I get there, and um, immediately a line forms, mm-hmm. and everybody wants pictures and signatures and stuff. And I'm like, this is why I'm here, mm-hmm. so I can actually shake your hand exactly. and thank you. Um, and I'm doing that for about 45 minutes, and then I get tapped on my shoulder. Rob's like, you got to do your live stream. I was like, and I look and I can't see the end of this line. I'm like. I'm like, you want me to go do a live stream for 12 people mm-hmm. when these people are paid to get in here? And, yeah. and I didn't say that. I was just like, I don't. That's just what it's I like. Was like. I was like, who's doing it with me? He's like, just you. I was like, you want me to get up on that stage where nobody can hear me? I didn't say this either because I'm not that rude. Yeah, no. Um, but in my head, I'm like, you it's want me to get on that stage feeling. where nobody can hear me? And I'm just talking to an audience of, I think, like 12 or 18 people watch. And, and, live. Yeah, live. Yeah. I mean, they eventually get views and whatnot. Yeah. And um, and I'm looking at the line. I'm like, you just. I was like, okay, I'm, I'll do it, but I'm not doing it alone. And I yeah. grabbed Carrie yeah. from Science Gal Aquatics because mm-hmm. she was helping me. Her and her husband. That was a funny story. I'll save that for. <laughs> I'm gonna get her on the podcast at some point. Yeah. Um, and we go up and we talk a little bit. Meanwhile, I'm watching people in line waiting to meet me. Yeah. I do a 15 minutes or something like that, and then I wrap it up on a high note. It was funny. It was good. I liked it. Um, and. Uh, then I just go right back to what to the fans that, that are, are there. there right then in person. Yeah. And then I have my skate off mm-hmm. and then it's pictures with fans. And then I have my talk yeah. and then pictures of fans. Mind you, no time to use the bathroom. Yeah. I try to. I scoot no off when I can. Eat, no um, time to use no the eating. Bathroom. No, none of that. You know, it's not sometimes it's not that busy, but, you know, a lot of the times I, well, think, I think that if like, I'm rushing around or something like I maybe I've been holding to use it, the bathroom for like six, seven hours. Yeah, I think what people like who weren't per- who aren't at the event in person sometimes think is that you just didn't have time to do the live stream because you had like more important things that you personally wanted to do. Whereas, well, the, just the reason I bring it up is I've seen some comments on the internet people, people that just weren't there. Yeah. And, and you know, you tell them a big enough lie about somebody, it becomes the truth. Mm-hmm. And they're like, Joey doesn't care about his fans. Joey doesn't care about... Th-. I'm like, you no, weren't there. Know what I was exactly doing. exactly what I was trying to do. <laughs> like, it, it is what it is. But, uh, you know, Dallas was great. Um, Dallas is always great. The fans there... How, are, how did it feel to be, like, in person with people again after the pandemic? Were you excited? Not as much as I wanted to be because um, people think that, like... So the the problem with like being on the internet versus being in person is you always wonder am I what you imagined am I what you pictured am I everything you thought I was going to be right. and you know I haven't been working out I haven't been feeling healthy I haven't you know I'm just down on myself um, as many people have been throughout the entire process over the last couple of years mm-hmm. um, it's been rough yeah <laughs> so uh, everybody loved it you know when I did my talk well yeah. they did this like other thing right before me and that ran like 30 40 minutes late over time yeah um and they had me book for five just to keep people in the building because i usually get booked for 12 one two mm-hmm. which is prime time right um and they uh had me book for five and uh whatever they were doing ran half hour 45 minutes past schedule right. so then i had to do my talk Pretty late. and i felt like I got 15, 20 minutes because people are assuming I'll be done by six. Yeah. So I had to blast through it and summarized. Mm-hmm. And it was still good. There was, good uh, talk, yeah. you know, I, you know, and I fed off the crowd of their laughs. I see, you know, and some people were crying because I like to do my stories. Roller coaster and, ride. You know, and, this, and the talk was simply like um, I tried to keep it on theme as well because as keynote, you have to have you're the theme of the entire event. And nobody does that. Yeah. But I always try to do it. And the theme was Halloween. So I picked... Um, five scary stories that have happened within my hobby um, that ended up having deeper life lessons. So you can imagine, I'm telling these scary stories that are kind of funny, but then I have this deeper meaning and what it meant to me and things that life lessons and things I learned off of it. Um, And then, so the entire talk is just up and down. I think, and I had about 15 minutes to do it, 20 minutes. And then, you know, more pictures and whatnot. Yeah. And those are what I like to do. I just like to do the pictures and get to mm-hmm. meet people. Because 
I think a couple of things are funny. When people see me in person for the first time, sometimes, not everybody, but I can see it in their eyes, like they're so excited. And yeah. I think it's so funny because <laughs> I'm just normal. And it's just so funny to see somebody look at me like and that. Like and I feed you. off of it. So I'm extra friendly and extra like um, shaking their hand. And <laughs> it's just funny to me. It's just, uh, yeah, it's exciting. And the bottom line is like, do I think I'd ever do more events? Um, after that and getting to see... I just have to figure out what I really want. And I don't really want to do talking and competitions and stuff, even though... Well, I was going to ask you about the scape off. You you became the champion once again. Mm. And I was going to ask if there would be anyone you'd be willing to scape off with again. And if so, who and why? I would go up against... Um, well, at that event, I went up against Mike from Aquapro. So I'm going to try to get on this podcast because he's doing some cool things right now. I'm um, starting up a new company and stuff. And I'd really like to... Uh, dive deeper into that and help promote them and stuff but um i went up against mike and mike got it yeah he understood what i was doing mm -hmm. so he understood the assignment <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh a lot of people think that the scape off so when i when i come up with the idea of the scape off and going head to head um it was originally in the uk against george farmer years ago and I wanted, I told, like, when we talked about it, and I always give him credit, like, he'd come up with the idea. That's not really what, it doesn't matter, Apple and Orange or whatever. Um, I was like, aquarium events are boring. They are boring for the most part. And I'm like, if I come over there and we do this, I, I was like, I don't want it to be serious. I want to get the crowd involved. I want them cheering. I want them to feel like they're actually involved with yeah, something as opposed part. to just sitting in the background as quietly you, you and know, watching as we spend an hour setting up a tank. I was like, screw an hour. Let's yeah. do it in 15 minutes. Um, and I think at that point we did 20, 30 minutes, which was way mm. too long. And that was when I realized that I'm really on to something. Um, yeah. You know, the cr I got the crowd involved. I'm I and, and what I. I realized from there is like if I go up against serious aquascapers, they think this is really who's the better scaper. Yeah. In my opinion, when we're doing a scape off, you and I are not winning or losing. Mm -mm. It's the crowd. And if you don't want to feed to the crowd, if you don't mm -hmm. want to play off the crowd, if you don't want to give them the best experience possible, they lost. Yeah. If you want to take this serious, I'm probably going to win. And you want to give them a reason to want to come back. I only lost once. Yeah. Um, I went up against George Farmer twice. It was twice. when I was there. I went up against <laughs> the Sensky brothers. Um, I went up against uh, Dustin, Mike. Uh, I think I'm like I think I'm like five and one. Yeah. Um, and I lost against Dustin for a Dustin. simple reason. Uh, he played the crowd with me. And I was and hung over. So he, was, he did it way better than I would. And I dumped water all over his passport by accident in yeah. his backpack, and then he had to go on stage. Yeah, right before I had to go on stage. I don't have to make excuses, but, like, <laughs> yeah, right before I went on stage, um, my passport was soaked. And I was like, this is how I get home. I'm like, we got to figure this out. It so wasn't good. You disappeared I off trying to dry it. I got to get on stage. Hand drying it under the blow dryer. The Haley from On Ball Aquatics came in the bathroom. What She's like, doing? what are you doing? I'm yeah. like, I dumped water on his passport by accident. It's not a good time. Yeah, so <clears throat> it was interesting. And uh, But when I went up against Mike, I tried to, like, so previous to that, I was, like, doing Instagram stories, stories and, and, like, yeah. roasting him, trying to hype it up and stuff. <laughs> And he never replied back, so I was like, "Great!" And you were giving it to him. <laughs> yeah, well, it was funny, tasteful. <laughs> it was a good time. Um, and I thought that like he's not going, he's going to take this serious. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been some people that took it serious against me, and they get like so. If you watch the videos back, and some people do creative editing, but you'll watch every. If you watch it unedited, I'm the one that when their turn is to get the cheers and whatnot, I'm the one clapping yeah. and, tr and going like this, like get the crowd to Everybody give them cheers. for them. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then when it's my turn, besides Mike, everybody's just like, they, they just cross their arms. <laughs> They're upset and, that he won. And I'm like, this isn't a competition competition. Yeah. It, well, like, it's fun. Well, it is. You know, yeah. I don't want to remove Everyone my tactics from it. And yeah. people are like, yeah, this is just for fun for yeah. Joey. And he's just... I want people to still attend them and do those yeah. things, but that was never the point. It was, I don't think I'm actually a better scaper. Um, I don't think, I, I think that we have different methods and tastes and ideas and what we like and what they like. And we're just different hobbyists that do different things. Um, but Mike was playing the crowd mm -hmm. and there's a couple of times when I got nervous. <laughs> 
Um, Sticker throw. First and foremost, there's not many escaping <laughs> supplies. There's like yeah, I saw. There's I like three it rock piles on their face, and page. all the rocks are different colors, and there's like five of each rock. Yeah. And it was like a seventy gallon tank. Yeah. And then I had two sticks, <laughs> and he had three. I'm like, what am I going to do with this? So I was like, okay, <laughs> we'll play the crowd and, you know, um, joke around and whatnot. But he got to it before me. Yeah. He come over. Ultimate disrespect. <laughs> but I loved it. He uh, took a pocket full of the stickers that he sells and he, like, uh, like made it rain in my <laughs> it tank. It was good. It was good. And, and it was good. But it pissed me off because I was like, <laughs> oh, he's got this now. This is clutch move. Um, so I was like. I took them out and I just started giving them out to the crowd because I'll do that. Like if, if I think I'm losing, I'll start giving free stuff out. I'll take escaping supplies off the stage. Like here, you want this here? You can have this. <laughs> you like me, right? <laughs> yeah. That's not why I do it. I just, you know, <laughs> everything on the stage is already written off and it's supposed to be. So I'm like, yeah, screw it. Nobody's ever gotten mad at me for giving the stuff out. So I just do it anyways. And it's mostly kids and stuff. Um, and then I tried to pick him up and put him in my tank. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I was. I watched it back, and when he was still away, I texted him. I was like, "When are you gonna pick me up like that?" But it was fun, <laughs> and that was the first time that uh, he got to experience that many people. I mm-hmm. think, and the cheering and stuff. And I feed off, and I was yeah. used to it, so I always have that advantage of like, um, I was nervous too when I used to get on stages and yeah. stuff. Now I love it, it's and fun. well, I don't love it. I'm still nervous. Yeah, I'm still you know self-conscious and stuff and the same uh, you know i still get stage fright and you know i might choke um but uh i'm a little more experienced and that is important to be experienced in that type of area to be mm-hmm. in front of that many people and that loud for sure um and it went to the cheering again because they were doing text messages oh yeah that they, they had like a so and i said i was like fail. so you want you people like, to yes. sit there quietly <laughs> you want people to sit there quietly and text their vote in i'm like why Maybe COVID. I don't like, know. Like who cares? Was it because of COVID? Well, I the did dro- bring it up. I did bring it up. I did bring it up to Sean at one point that I was like, "I'll do the scape off, but I only have one condition: mm-hmm. the person holding it and the people on the stage can't scream at the top of their lungs for the other right person." To the microphone. Yeah. So <laughs> they'll do this. They'll put up the the sensor. Yeah. And then like I watch the playbacks. Yeah. I was like, they're screaming on stage. <laughs> right here. <laughs> and then when it's mean, they're all quiet. But I still won because yeah. it's actual crowd response. And people are like, oh, this is just a popularity contest. I'm like, yes. I'm like, that is all voting is. It's never, it's never, voting never that really what, comes down to the best. If you look at it, that is what voting is. Yeah, that is voting. Like if you look at even politics. Democracy <laughs> <Exactly>. is like, <laughs> who gets the most votes is who's your new leader. Yeah. And it is a popular, well, and with this, I, I tried to explain to people, I was like, to everybody I escape off with is like it's not about who has the best scape mm-hmm. it's who's the best entertainer and yeah. it will definitely help if your scape's cool well that's what's gonna bring people to want to watch it and look forward to going and watching that event and coming to see that well Mike was close with me yeah and Dustin did really well as well but I don't view them as like pro scapers mm-hmm. I think they're like really good hobbyists that do really good scapes probably yeah. better than me but when they go up against pro scapers what they get a taste of is like your scapes are beautiful but mm-hmm. they're not relatable right um and when people see mine it's far more relatable like that's something hey, i feel i could do and I they would cheer for that. that yeah yeah and it's interesting i like yeah. it anyways nonetheless it's, it's cool, always been fun cool to think about it like that yeah. you also visited the um dallas aquarium yeah which that was looked a, like it was amazing mm-hmm. incredible beautiful that was interesting <laughs> i was um, jealous of that and you should have, um, <laughs> you should be, rightfully so. The Dallas World Aquarium is what I went to. It was seven minutes away. So Jake Adams from Reef Builders. And at this point, I hate affiliating him with Reef Builders. I think Jake Adams is his own personality. Right. Um, and I don't mean to disrespect Reef Builders because they're a very credible uh, source of information. Um, but And he'll be on the podcast eventually. So he was like, hey, um, I land on... Friday morning at so and so o'clock. Do you want to meet up at the aquarium? I was like, mm-hmm. Do you want to check in first, get your bags situated? He's like, Nah, whatever. I was like, So that morning, he's landing. We're on the phone. I was like, Do you want to get something to eat? He's like, We'll eat there. I was like, Oh, there's a restaurant. We get there, and he has the curator of the zoo or the public aquarium waiting to meet us. Yeah. Uh, and you're not allowed to film there at all. So I start filming. She's like, No, we can't film. She's like, I'll check with the owner and we'll see. And the owner, like, 
because they just want positive things because some people will go there not knowing what they're talking about talk out the side of their mouth like like yeah. they're an expert and yeah they're like this is horrible and that's horrible and it's just bad press like nobody wants that obviously like um i agree with it to a certain extent i mean it is what it is you especially have to protect your business yeah and especially since it's a visual business why yeah. would you want everything on the internet yeah um so we get there we have dinner or lunch the curator covers the cost Jake's nice. like, I'll get, a, I'll get, I'll get, uh, Jake's like, I'll get two beer. And I'm looking at him like, there's no beer here. He's like, I'll get two beer because I'll run through the first one, then I'll sip the second one. I was like, there's <laughs> beer here? He's like, oh yeah. And the curator's Double like. Double fist in it. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, well, I guess I'll get two beer. Now the food is based off of, so you can view the Indo- Indonesia exhibit, the Pacific uh, exhibit, and all the food is based off of That's those areas. That's really cool. Yeah. So I, I don't know what I had, but it was delicious. I enjoyed <laughs> it. Whatever it was. As I sat in a glass box surrounded by aquariums, it was really cool. Awesome. And then I got to hear stories from the last 30 years. Oh, wow. I just I just shut my mouth and I was like, and then added in like the little filler <laughs> things like, oh, no way. Really? We're going back <laughs> and I'm coming with you. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. Well, I don't think I could ever... Uh, do a visit like that so we get done with that it takes uh it takes about four hours for me to get through the whole thing yeah you were telling me absolutely incredible though so i thought the first part of so when you're in line outside yeah it's all ponds and aquariums and exotic birds and things like that um and plants. then plants there were so many plants yeah there was a lot of pl- it was, it was Just very gorgeous well the owner wanted to feel like you're actually walking through the amazon mm-hmm. or actually walking through that and it definitely comes across like that so but the top version where the restaurants are is just like a regular aquarium mm-hmm. and uh that's what i thought the rest of it was going to be till we went through these doors and we were like almost outside yeah and i was just blown away and there was tiki bars so that was cool <laughs> jake's like you want to get bar- want to get another beer and i was like and he's just walking over to this little tiki bar i was like hell yeah let's get another beer <laughs> and we're just sitting there walking around looking at all this cool stuff he's telling me facts i'm telling things that i like and it was just interesting because he's from the saltwater world but very well versed in plants and birds, birds and he likes that? freshwater as well and it's the opposite for me so well versed in freshwater so there's things that I, and, it was and, just you a, and you said that his wife or his girlfriend was with with you guys yeah, and his every wife. time you were like <laughs> making fun of him for knowing so many facts <laughs> she <laughs> was loving it she, she was <laughs> laughing and stuff and uh it, 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 he just knew too many useless facts <laughs> like the identification of not useless to him the identification <laughs> of every plant um, not useless to some people i filmed it uh but the audio is a little messed up and uh I put it out to the members only on my main channel and they loved it and they thought like, yeah, everybody should see this, but I don't know. I think maybe they could just have it. Mm-hmm. Um, it, right, it's yeah. like a 40 it sucks minute that video. It wasn't able to be put out, but the audio was pretty, it was, it pretty was just like muffled or like blown out. It was blown or, out. Yeah. Like it was just peaked so, too high. Um, that was too bad. Not the whole time, just certain things. Um, but I think they would really like to see it. Yeah. I think they enjoyed it and, uh, I think others would as well, but, I think, um, you know, the trip in general was fantastic. We've done a lot of other things over the past few months, of course. Uh, I can't remember anything that didn't happen in the last week. <laughs> well, we set up all these aquariums. Yeah, that's um, true. The piranha tank is just getting better and better by day. It's becoming well established. It's They're dark. growing. Yeah, the piranha. Like, They're uh, starting to come out and about a little bit more yeah. than they usually do. The other do. day I thought I had six piranha left. I'm like, I don't know where anybody is. Nope, but apparently my more. scaping skills allows them to hide. <laughs> um, and when I feed, there's like as many as are supposed to be, like 20 or so. But some of them are so tiny and some of them are so big. Archer Aquarium is becoming well established, getting algae. It's looking far more natural. Um, at f- a lot of these tanks looked a little too sterile at first. But if I let them establish, if I let some algae grow and, and get in there, uh, they're just going to look absolutely gorgeous. I added more fake plants in with the archers and they are out filling the tank now Mm -hmm. giving them more security and whatnot yeah at the beginning when you put them in they were sort of at the back a lot more hiding and whatnot and the archers but uh, i think they're gonna really like their friends yeah once we add in those monos and and scats it's 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 going to be one of my favorite tanks but then i look at the well then i look at the product and that's what i'm doing with the gallery is that when i look at an aquarium that's out here Mm -hmm. this is it for me like Mm -hmm. this is my favorite tank and then I look over. I'm like, oh wait, just, just oh a yeah, second now. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to previously, where it's just like, what do you guys want to see and stuff? And that's cool. And I really enjoy doing it. But you know, you kind of get lost in setting up a new tank and you know, new tank, new fish. 
and, and that all of that is fun, but for me, it's not who I am as obvious, and I really want to do some things that I really want to do, and I'm doing them now. Mm-hmm. Well, we got a ton of empty tanks at this point, uh, and a ton of things to do. One of the things that happened the other day, though, that I noticed, I was on Instagram, and uh, Joe Rogan posted a, a photo of a fish a f- fossil. A fish fossil, and um, I saw it seconds before you. <laughs> is it? Well, I seen and it I was in like, 45 oh, minutes. I wonder after. if he's gonna say anything. <laughs> yeah, we like the we like the podcast stuff, and uh, you know, follow along and whatnot. The podcasts and, uh, are good. Yeah, especially like ones especially like this one. <laughs> yeah, this is the best. We really like this one. We recommend this one. <laughs> Give us five stars. We're coming for Joe Rogan. <laughs> no, we're, we're too niche to actually grow too big. I'm so used to typing Joey that when I search the Joe Rogan experience, I search the Joey Rogan experience. <laughs> I wonder if his real name is Joey and he just likes Joe instead because it's like more biblical or something. Well, doesn't Joey come from Joe, though? Yeah, my name's I not guess. even Joey, though. No, I know. Joe's my middle name. Yeah. Michael's Where my first name. Where does the Y come from? Just, just like to make it cuter? It. I don't know. I was a <laughs> I like kid. It. <laughs> I was a kid. My dad left and his first name's Michael. My first name was Michael. I didn't want to be called him anymore. I didn't want the same name as him anymore. This isn't supposed to get dark, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to be called Joe, and then it just became Joey, I guess, over yeah. time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, post this picture from a fish fossil from the Himalayas. Uh, he, he said something about, like, the Him- Himalayan mountains used to be underwater. And, of course, they're on tectonic plates when those collide, you know. The earth comes up and forms mountains. I think we all know how that works. Or volcanoes. I don't know how the Himalayans were formed. But I had commented... Uh, when the Andes Mountains were formed, they believe that's where a lot of the freshwater stingrays came from, getting trapped. Right. Um, because most fish started in salt water. Mm-hmm. Some animals got out of the water, evolved, and went back. Do you know one of the... Okay, the largest animal in the world. What is it? Is the, it uh, the la- like okay, it? let me put it this way. The largest animal <laughs> to ever live. I don't do well with trivia. <laughs> It's not trivia. This <laughs> it is, facts. is trivia. The largest animal to ever live. Um, is it like I don't know, like like a whale? It is the whale. The okay. blue whale. Okay. Um, I'm just not confident with myself. That's and are all the that whales? Is. <laughs> what is the whale? What, what family are they classified as? Like a reptile, an amphibian, a fish, uh, a mammal? A mammal. That's right. So. Do you, whales used to be on ground. They've evolved, of course. Yeah. To lose their legs. I think and I did know this. And they went back to the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, they say <laughs> all. Like, mm, there's out. a lot of saltwater <laughs> fish, and almost all fish came from saltwater. But a lot of them got trapped in areas like, um, in lakes that yeah. used to that used to have a river leading to them to the mm-hmm. ocean, and, and it they merged. get in them, and and then like the, you know the lake or the rivers and stuff dry up, and mm-hmm. they just are trapped. But then a lot of um, fresh, they become fresh water over time. Mm-hmm. And then they say a lot of fresh, and this is over 100 million years. This isn't mm-hmm. like in the last 25 years or anything. This takes. This happened last week. <laughs> yeah, millions of years. <laughs> and they say that like, um, and I might have some of this wrong, but, and I just go off loosely off of like articles I read years ago or something like that. But, um, and they say some fresh water went back and evolved into salt water. Right. Um, but when it comes to s- stingrays, they were trapped. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the Andes Mountains when they were formed. That's how they assume. Um, And you can find stingray fossils up to 150 million years ago. And by 100 million years ago, 50 million years went by until we had all of the stingrays that we have today. Or at least most of them were. You know, we probably... This, like, stuff, when you deep dive into these facts and stuff, and this, like... Well, trivia is facts, right? I guess. Anyways... It's so interesting and fascinating, and I think that it would help people who aren't in the hobby become interested. And well, it reminds me of the other night when you mentioned and you were talking about the lateral lines that you said every fish has these lateral lines, mm-hmm. and you were like deep diving just personally to well, me. The, the you lateral, were talking about it. lateral like, oh, lines. You need to make a video about this. Lateral <laughs> lines on a fish are sensory pores. Um, they sense movement in the water or different pressure changes. So mm-hmm. when you add or remove. Um, and when it comes to a stingray, 
you don't really see their lateral lines. That does yeah. that mean they don't have lateral lines? And I bring up Stingray simply because we're talking about it. And I could really deep dive. Anyways, this is a new series I'm working on yeah. where I talk about these sort of things, like these things that actually fascinate that I don't talk yeah. about on my regular videos. It's because like mind blowing stuff that you might never have noticed. But before. the Stingray does have lateral lines. Yeah. But they have a lot of them, uh -huh. and it's absolutely incredibly mesmerizing. Um, and they've they found out this out by taking stingrays and de-skinning them and seeing this lateral lines but um yeah i i think that uh oh and most stingrays can't see color yeah uh, and for the longest the time they always too. thought they would they could see nothing so they have to come up with different they're the ultimate predator especially sharks mm -hmm. so their lateral line system is built differently than most others so rays skates and uh sharks are they're from the family the of family yeah from the family of the lasmo branch um, and uh, their their lateral lines, they have them. They're just not what you think. Mm -hmm. So on an Asian arowana or an Oscar, they're clearly visible because these are big fish. You can see it um, going from their tail up to almost their gill plates. Yeah. Um, you can see it clearly on the monos. They have one. Um, cichlids, of course, have two where they're broken in half and they kind of overlap like this. Mm -hmm. And if you have never noticed these lines on your fish before, I recommend going to look because it's it is pretty cool like i never notice it but now oh, every yeah. time i'm out here in the gallery i just keep going and i look at the tanks and i'm looking for these lateral lines so the series <laughs> that i'm working on and i'm not really working on it i just play around with it in my head yeah. i'll eventually film an episode yeah. maybe in the next little while but yeah, i do want to talk about interesting things that i find fascinating about certain species of fish and then i want to talk about why it's fascinating like mm -hmm. i could point something out but then i want to talk about what's that for mm -hmm. um and what does it mean to the fish and what does it mean to us yeah and how can we capitalize on that mm -hmm. um and how can we make their aquariums even better for the actual fish because so many people in my comments when it comes to certain animals are like this needs this and that needs that and i'm like no it doesn't and they have no reasoning or facts behind it they're just making these statements yeah. so some animals need less in the aquarium simply because they have a different lateral line system and how they find food and whatnot some don't have a, uh, a great eyesight or a conical system that allows them to see and the cones and rods in their eyes to see color um and these are things that I want to talk about because I think they're fascinating. Because when I when you show when I show you a fish tank, if I want to get the average person involved, yeah, they're gonna and it's got to be pretty, yeah, pretty fish, active, yeah. uh, colorful Colors aquascape, and, and beautiful yeah. and that sort of thing. But if I can show them other things and talk about other things, and let's take a, a one step further, yeah, and just explain to you why I think things are fascinating, because it's even stuff when that's always overlooked. Yeah, so I overlooked it. Even if I talk about the archers or if I if somebody comes here and they they just see a black and gray and but if I tell them that their mouths are simply uh, specifically formed to be able to shoot water out of their mouth um, and they they have the ability. So when you see refraction of light, so when you put your hand underwater in a pool, it might look different. Mm -hmm. They have the ability to correct that. Yeah. There's so many interesting facts about every fish, about why they are the way they are. And one of the things I've done recently over the past year or two was I've tested the waters. Yeah. I talk about the uh, the clown trigger. Yeah. I'm like, why does it look the way it looks? And I, that's what I find fascinating. Yeah. And because I was trying to trigger comments. And if most of the comments were about that, oh, I wonder why too. Or what's mm -hmm. this? Or that's interesting. That and will trigger me to dive deeper into the series that I want to do. Yeah. I'll start off with stingrays and then I want to move into other fish and like puffers and whatnot. But I, I, I want to talk about like just so many things just that things. absolutely fascinate me. Yeah. And I think that everybody's going to like it i think so will it get views and stuff i'm excited i don't care <laughs> i don't care anymore i want to talk about I things i really want to talk about i already went through the viral phase yeah. and that is too much pressure to make well, every you video had a video recently in the last year or so and you were talking about like your most poisonous fish and like yeah. certain things like that a lot of people and appreciate those types of videos scats, i think yeah have Mm -hmm. A little something, something there that people don't even know. We well, saw those the fishing pictures, and we're like, they the, shouldn't hold it like that. Well, in some of the comments of uh, from people from Thailand, mm -hmm. they've been stabbed, mm -hmm. and they said the only thing that can maybe help is run it under as hot of water as you can possibly stand. Which, obviously, they're not poisonous. Yeah, they're venomous, just like yeah. the stingray, and that's one of the same things that you do with a stingray, and that it coagulates the venom uh, and stops it from spreading and you know 
the, this the stuff is cool. Subs I think stuff. people will really like these videos. Yeah, I want to talk about. And if they don't, <laughs> I'm here for them. <laughs> Imagine if your skin was your teeth, but the skin in your mouth is just simply modified. Yeah. I want to talk about that because that's what a stingray's teeth are. Yeah. It's their skin. It's their scales. Just modified. In that was mouth. something else interesting that happened since the podcast has been off is you went and rescued that stingray. That oh, the barb, barb stuck yeah. in its mouth. Yeah, that could have been really bad. Yeah. Uh, I was really happy I got at that, though. Yeah. Um, it's we literally f- dropped our day and went to, to fi- fix him up. <laughs> well, and... <laughs> Make and, sure he's okay. And, and I'm not... And I, and I didn't want that video to come across like I'm bagging on fish store employees. No, some are really great, no. but when you specialize or when you have 20 years experience, it's a it's different. And it's also helpful to them to be able to know these yeah. things too. Like it's important. You know, I have a love for sting, but I have a love for all the fish that I have. And what I say on video versus what I know about the fish are entirely different because I always think it's too boring. But I just don't care anymore. I'm talking about that stuff. It's not boring. Like it or not, I want to <laughs> get you more in. I just want you to fall deep in love like I am. Yeah. Just have and a it, deeper look overall. Yeah, and, and I just have to articulate it in a way that anybody can understand. I think it'll do really well. I think, Well, in my opinion, and, and what I think people will enjoy, we'll see, though. Mm-hmm. We'll see long term, and um, we'll go from there. I mean, of course, this is just off the top of my head, I, the middle of the night. So, I mean, um, I, I also don't want to ruin too many facts or too many things that I find interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I'll tease a little bit. <laughs> I'll be right back. Do you want to take it from here? Just put it on you. Oh, okay. It's only me, and and now now that he's gone, oh, I have nothing to say. Okay, um, my favorite tank out here, uh, even as they evolve, I keep going back and loving the shell dwellers. And the reason why is because I just think they are so interesting and fun to watch, and they have their breeding activity. So maybe it's that's what I'm into is is seeing fish have like go through all their stages but i just think that they are so interesting and fun to watch and the little and the little ways they move around and the little things that they do and i also think that it's so interesting that to move them from one aquarium to the other all you have to do is put your hand in the tank and they'll just hop on into their shell and you just move them over to where they're going but other than them, I guess if I had to pick a second, I would pick the scats because they're so friendly and cute. And every time I look at them, I smile back at them. And there are goldfish snacks <laughs> that I eat all the time, little crackers. And it's called the snack that smiles back. But when I look at them, <laughs> no, seriously, I'm, on, I'm like literally I'm on this whole, like, what's she talking about? But when I look at the scat's little mouths, I feel like they are the goldfish smile on those crackers. And I'm like, they're smiling at me. And I get so, and I get so happy that I just, I just want to smile at them too. It's interesting to Don't hear. Don't let me talk by myself. <laughs> I heard you struggling a bit. Um... <laughs> And uh, it's interesting to hear somebody that's not that well, <laughs> well, and, and well versed <laughs> in the hobby. But you're not here for that. You've seen mm-hmm. all my videos. You know what I do. And it's so hard to talk to yourself. I've done a podcast before. Yeah, um, I do feel more confident than I felt in the last week of filming. Though. Yeah, but you enjoy the shell dwellers. I did yeah. hear that. Uh, I oh, think the, I love uh, them. I think once you get the opistos going and they're growing out and stuff, you'll also notice that they're not all opistos. Some of them are rams. Um, oh really? Yeah, I'll give it time and let you enjoy that tank, though. But the reason why the shell dwellers are so fascinating, in my opinion, is for a number of reasons. One, they're one of the world's, uh, if not the world's, smallest cichlid. And cichlids have the reputation for being big and bosterous and mean and destructive and territorial. Like the huh? they yeah. are savages. But these guys are too. <laughs> they are too, just on a micro level. Hmm. They have short man syndrome. but when did they develop that relationship with shells what were they before that why do they depend so heavily on shells and and and, and these are things that i know the answer to but i always think that nobody wants to hear it and that's why the new series is going to happen (laughs) i'm going to look at a fish and well the purpose of the series is I want you to look at your fish differently. I want you to research certain things. I want you to be more educated. But most importantly, 
the way we get people into the hobby is very simple. When they come to see your aquarium, what happens? They either want one or they just think it's cute. It's pretty. It's cute. Ooh, that's interesting. I could never have one, blah, blah, blah. But what I want you to be able to do is take it a step further and just fascinate them with these interesting things like, yeah, it's very beautiful, but did you know this? And of course they don't, or maybe you don't start it like that. And uh, maybe you just tell them some interesting facts. Two things are going to happen. One, you're going to sound so much smarter, so much more intelligent <laughs> than you are. Even when I do that uh, and I talk about these things, I, I remember uh, Gary for the first time, he's like, the only time I ever thought you were s smart or passionate was when you talked about fish tanks. He's like, you just become a different person. You said the same person. about me with dogs. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, it's... It, it's going to just simply get more people in the hobby. We've done the viral thing. We've done the great tanks and the, you know, the catchy stuff. And now I want to get into why I'm actually in love with aquariums. So when I first got into fish tanks, I talked about the fact that um, I was so fascinated, not with the colors, yeah, and not with the, the appearance. I just couldn't understand how they were living under the water. Yeah. Because you put yourself under there. I'm not going to be. I wanted to know how their gills worked <laughs> or how they were breathing or how that functioned or anything like that. And the way the gills work, it's on a molecular level. Yeah. And some of the fish, they do come up and breathe oxygen, yeah? Yeah, the laborants. The surface. You know, some people ask, what's Better the best fish, the best fish the to start? Used to. Yeah, one of the best fish, in my opinion, to start with is based off of the way uh, their biological... Uh, makeup mm -hmm. and a lot of the times in a new aquarium there's going to be ammonia there's going to it's going to be filthy water the downside with labyrinth fish is a lot of them have long flowing fins yeah. which uh they can be prone to fin rot and whatnot but we're trying to keep the fish alive right and when it comes to a labyrinth fish and many other types of fish they have the ability to gulp oxygen from the surface mm -hmm. and process it through the labyrinth organ that's right beside right behind their head and uh they don't have to deal necessarily with the quality of the water. Mm -hmm. Downside to that is maybe they never learn the nitrogen cycle because their fish is always gasping at the surface. The betta is <laughs> the a... The whole time, if your fish is always gasping for air, the do beta. something Well, some people say beta. Betta. Betta. Beta. I, I say betta. Betta is betta. Yeah. Which betta? That betta <laughs> is way better than that betta. I said that <laughs> that Joe Kids video. Um <laughs> I said a lot of things, and uh, George cut out my funniest parts that I thought were <laughs> yeah. funny. He's like, I think... Why did you leave that out? <laughs> I think he thought they were a little too, too, risque. too much. Yeah, because I was, like, flirting <laughs> with his mom, and yeah. I was, like, saying things like, uh, you know, you better be respectful, because maybe <laughs> one day I'll be your stepdad. Stuff like, just the silliest thing. I don't know if I said that word for word, but Something he was like a good that. sport. <laughs> um, she was a good sport, too. <laughs> yeah, she really was. Yeah, she really was. And There's so many. That's. I think that was my favorite part. Sorry to jump off topic, but my favorite part was meeting so that was the that people. Trip, that was like a trip nice to Chicago, and uh, we did a video with George Marvakis, Coralfish 12G, and Joe, the fish guy. Joe was like 12 or 13 at the time, yeah. something like that. But my son is the same age, so I know how to talk to them. Yeah. And they are literal trolls. <laughs> yeah. They They probably belong under a bridge for the next three to four years <laughs> as they learn how to be respectful. But they just crack jokes and be a troll. They're constantly. having a good time. And guess who They're, else is good at You know at what? That? They're being exactly what a kid should be. Yeah. And an adult Joey should be. <laughs> that was worse. So people are going to say, what are you smoking, Joey? They said it in the... So when the podcast first came out, they said it a lot. Like, what is yeah. that? Yeah. So when the podcast first came out, it was... So I smoked cigarettes my whole life um, since maybe 12, 13. And then um, maybe a few years ago, I quit. I tried to take, like, Champax or something. Didn't work out, but I loved the dreams. Um, <laughs> then I started vaping, and that helped and lower your dosage. I don't like yeah. vaping because it's just douchebag looking. Not... Not... Not mean mad to offend clouds. anybody <laughs> yeah this is blowing mad class uh, i like the fact that i can lower my dosage until i get yeah. off completely and that worked but then you know summer hits and you're barbecue and you have a beer and you want a cigarette you did switch <laughs> though but anyways in those podcasts um i was on like nicorette and stuff yeah that was recent like s nicorette sprays and i'm trying to have as much as i can the mints and the sprays and the patch and the and there was like an inhaler. Yeah. I think the inhaler is what people kept asking what it was. What is that? Because it looks so weird. It almost like looked like bite. like a tampon. <laughs> <laughs> I was. And he's like, I feel like I'm smoking a tampon. 
Yeah, so I uh Do you wanna do you wanna fill those up? Yours and mine? Oh sure. Oh sure. Now you're on your own. Oh, I don't know if anybody's seen this. False. <laughs> Who watched the office? We do. Like twelve times. Well, we did. We watched it about eight times. No, it was like 12. <laughs> uh, whatever. Um, there was a time when, yeah, watched that continuously and repetitively. I'd love to know your guys' thoughts. The, the, the only downside to doing the podcast is there's no immediate feedback. So I don't know if what I'm saying is something you agree with or you disagree with. Um, or if you like what I'm saying or don't like what I'm saying. So feedback is incredibly important. I do know that in this podcast I'm holding back. I'm just trying to welcome everybody back. And to let them understand. One of the things that I want to do with camera angles, and I'm going to get your thoughts on this. I don't think it's too important. I think it's important to have like one camera angle where you can actually see us. But what I'm thinking for the others, and uh, so there's three set up right now. We could do a max of like four, I think, or five. I don't know. Um, And what I'm thinking is one camera should be way back, like on the corner of the 2000. You'll have to pour it on over there by yourself. Um... (laughs) Oh, it's downstairs. So I'm thinking one camera should be on the corner of the 2000. Oh, and these lights and the reflections that we've seen back here, all I got to do there is move them back. I just, I had so many things I had to do in ordering cables. I just had to tomorrow tonight. I was like, screw it. If we don't do this right now, we're just going to keep putting it off over and over and over again. And I really want to get this uh, rolling. I've already sent the booking software out to a few guests and uh, invited them on and they'll select what they want. No going back and forth. What day is good for you? And can you do this day? And what time? I hate doing that. Uh, so I just have this software. I send it and they go through a calendar and uh, they can pick their days and times or whatever. Um, and it works out so much easier. And then when they come in, and here's how the podcast works, is when they come in, um, they'll hear our opener. As soon as they get into the waiting room, we start talking. Um, and then a little bit of an intro. And then I invite them in. And that's the first time they hear my voice like talking to them there's we don't do any talking before or anything like that and when the podcast ends and i don't know if i've said it on video like recorded but i always ask them um you have a few days but if there's anything you don't want in here let me know i'll edit it out hopefully they don't so i don't have to go through that but i'll do it anyways or if you change your mind and you don't think the podcast shows you in a positive light or whatever light you want to be because this is a very freestyled put the put the act aside this is a conversation uh, and that can be pretty dangerous if if you have a padded personality on the internet, and most people do. So I just give them the opportunity. If you don't think you want it out at all, I'll never mention it, I'll never talk about it. I just won't air it, and that'll be that, because I think that's important. Um, so I'm thinking one angle way over there, a one angle way over there. So you not only see me, but you see me in my environment. Plus, you get to see the fish tanks. I mean. Um, I'd like to get these ones set up a little better for you. You got that? I'd like to get these uh, set up a little nicer for you so when the angle is that way. I'd also think, of course, the Asian Arowana needs to be lit up a little bit better. But, again, had to do this. Otherwise, we wouldn't do this. And I'm all about the conversation as opposed to the appearance. Uh, I think it's important to have good audio and good video, but not nearly as important as the topic and the conversation because i think right now youtube's overrun by the the flash and glitz of things and great editing and i used to be good at that but i gave it up a while ago i was like eh, i don't really feel like i need the smoke and mirrors the anymore. flashiness yeah i still like it but well you you sort of do this you're doing this like focusing on the on the actual conversation rather than the looks the same way you focus on the fish instead of making it so pretty <laughs> well, and that's the purpose. You still of, make it pretty now. And that's the purpose of the new series. See, yeah. what I want to talk about is is so many what makes them them and yeah. why I do what I do based off of what they actually require yeah. as opposed to what we what we think as humans they want. Need. Yeah. Plus some Please interesting the fish things. I that's mean, living there, not you who sees it. Yeah, I'm you gonna know, do it to every there. single fish out here. Um, so I'm all about. I don't save a lot of information in my mind, like scientific names. Like if I worked at a fish store, um, 
and I'm constantly looking at fish lists and constantly ordering the same thing. It's repetitive. Yeah. You memorize Latin names because mm-hmm. that's how they appear on on the order form. On the list, stuff. yeah. So yeah. a lot of times a uh, fish store employee can recite Latin names and they sound so intelligent because they're saying those Latin they names. They just have a good memory. Like, um, <laughs> in that aquarium over there, we have six astronautus, uh, oscillatus. Astronautus oscillatus. That's when people think, think people not, get the after Latin you name. about all the time. Is that how you pronounce things? I don't care. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's ever been like, I have no clue what you're saying. They yeah. know what I'm saying. But there's dialects, there's accents, and yeah. I've become so American with mine. Yeah. And some I people are like, I still hear. I I heard you call um a decal, a decal, because in America, that's what they call it. They call it. them decals. And now I call it that, too, because you, that's what well, you that, call it. I, I think but it I always make... used to call it a decal. Decals. <laughs> like, so those are like the stickers, the decals, the decals that you stick on something. Cause yeah, I, like I used on to your s- car, on your tank. I was, I was selling them with the book. Yeah. And I think maybe for the, a little while I was selling them mailed in envelopes and oh, it was right. just so overwhelming yeah because again of course i got to do everything myself um and so and and the stickers are like five ten bucks or like super affordable so there's high in demand yeah i had a hard time keeping them in stock i did but uh it would cut it close sometimes but it was just so overwhelming and and i have a bunch left like a not a bunch but a nice stack, just a little stack. i could put them on all of these tanks and i'm scared yeah. to because once i do people are gonna be like well can i have a sticker yeah and then the demand <laughs> and all See what I'll ship them. I'll do it. (laughs) Sign me up. (laughs) My audience is filled with bullies. And they bully me. (laughs) They make me do things that I don't want to do. And they'll keep bringing things up and bringing it up and bringing it up. It's not, it's all harmless. And I think for the most part, they know. Like, I think some people don't know, but a lot of them know of ongoing jokes. Yeah, well, most, I think there's like, you have your core audience who's been, who've been here and they know, but then you'll get the odd one who's like, what's everyone talking about? (laughs) But then they jump on board too. I met some people um, in Dallas. I met this one guy. I hope he hears this. Um, And the only way I'll describe him is based off his appearance because I don't remember his name. Um, I think he's Filipino. He has a shaved head. If he's not Filipino, he looks Filipino. He has tan skin. I'm not being insulting or like like racist, I guess. It's just like what he looked like to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm almost positive. And within that sentence, if he's watching, I know he's ear to ear smile right now. Because that's what he looks like. Um, I think we're about the same size. He might be a little smaller. But anyways, we met in the UK for the first time. And um, I guess I didn't have to describe it because he just told the story. But... I wanted him he to know. He wants you to know it's you. Yeah, I want him to know it's him. Because um, sometimes when I make videos, so here's the benefit and the real benefit of me meeting you guys in person is like when I come home, sometimes when I'm sick of looking at a camera, and this is going to sound like kind of sick, like kind of perverted, I guess, like I'll picture an individual person that I met and I feel like I'm making the video for them. Because sometimes it's really hard for me to look at the camera and talk to the camera all the time. I don't think that's creepy. I think that's like using someone as inspiration. Like I was saying when I was reading the questions, I felt like I was hearing other people that we've listened to their podcast, like talking. Let me back this up about six, seven years. I posted a picture on Instagram. I got this stuffy, uh, stuffed animal that was uh, a red Asian arowana. And if he doesn't know, he knows now. (laughs) Um this guy's a great guy and i was i told him i wanted to hang out with him afterwards too it was too hectic i'll get i guess i can get to that anyways um i had this picture of me hugging uh asian arowana it was a red asian arowana hugging it like like a like a child would <laughs> and like this big sausage looking fish <laughs> just hugging it and i posted to instagram i met him in the uk yeah at the london event and he's like can you take a picture of me like you did with the asian arowana and I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't want to in front of everybody, but the deep down, like... It was an inside the, joke. <laughs> the troll in, in me and the, and, and the sense of humor that I have was like, yes. <laughs> and we did it. Absolutely. So he pretended to be the Asian air waters, and he hands are <laughs> up like this, and he's closed his eyes, and he's smiling, and I'm holding him like this, and our heads are touching <laughs> like he's like my little baby. Love it. Seven years later, he's in Dallas. And we met again, and I knew he looked familiar. And, and then he said who he was. I was like... I was like, I cursed that. I was like, bullshit. <laughs> I was like, prove it or show me. And, and maybe he has a different 
course of events or different story or maybe I said something worse. But then he showed me. I was like, let's do it again. It and we you. took the picture again. <laughs> and um, the thing about it is, is like, if I look back at the picture with him seven years ago versus now, he's identical. I'm aging at a rapid rate. <laughs> I'm so old. I don't feel like I see you every day, but I don't feel like you are. I think you look better every day. Well, that's the worst part about being on YouTube. I guess like it's interesting and fun to have videos over the course of over a decade. But it's also like I have to see what I looked like 10 years ago and what I sounded like and looked like. That's great for my children. You get the like what you sounded like and looked like. I think with social media, most people get to see what they look like, but you get the full, like, you get, you do get to hear yourself and you get to see your mannerisms, which not everyone gets a mm-hmm. chance. They just see, like, the still photo. Yeah. I think um, it's not, it's just not very common to be able to follow somebody on YouTube for that long. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of them don't make it for as long as you. Well, have, some go viral for two or three years and then that's it. They stop. They, they fizzle out. It becomes too much. I think it's a yeah. it's a lot. It's a lot. The first time I ever appeared on video, I was so nervous. I was twenty five years old. I thought I looked too young to be taken seriously. Um, I thought that I didn't have enough experience and I didn't have enough time in the hobby and it showed through how old i looked yeah so it took me forever to even get on camera and then once i did and i was worried about people would make fun of me or yeah make fun of my appearance my teeth whatever it was going to be and then once i appeared on camera nobody said anything yeah i think we're our hardest so these days there's so all creators especially in the hobby i don't really watch um much else that was is within our niche but at one point it was a big deal to even talk it would be silent videos and then it turned into talking behind the camera and then it turned into set the camera up on a tripod and you would sit in front of your aquarium and talk and now it's evolved and everybody's on camera all the time um and it's just been fascinating to watch over you know the last 13 14 years of um what it's been and Mm -hmm. and it's just been it's been incredible at one point i used to get upset about like um like copycats and stuff and i don't mean like i made a do-it-yourself project and somebody copied it because that's the whole point of it i mean like channels that are trying to profit yeah and like just doing my videos and talking like me word for f- word sort of like yeah and filming like me they and might I thought, not even I, know what they're talking about but they're making the video anyway because you gave them the script i used to, yeah i used to be upset about that stuff um not so much anymore not at all anymore because i've realized that like that's only going to take you so far. And then you have to try to find your own identity. And when you start trying to do something else or like maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But I guess that um, people get inspired just the way they look at an aquarium and either way, same way I get inspired. And I understand it now because it's come full circle to me because when I started making videos, I would look up to other channels too. And the reason why I had to stop watching other channels because I started sounding like them. Yeah. And making videos just like them. The same editing, same type when the music kicks in or and all of that stuff. And it was a it was really I don't think I would have made it if I didn't have somebody to copy. Right. So I did it too. Mm-hmm. Um It's hard it's hard not to a little bit, I think, to copy someone else. And that was part of what for me too with the age like and feeling like you're too young and looking too young is when I started teaching dog agility classes I I've sort of retired for now but when I first started I was 14 years old and I was like none of these adults are gonna take me serious like how are they gonna think that I know what I'm talking about but the reason why is because I was doing it for longer than them and I did have the experience and I did have the knowledge and I knew what I was talking about but that's what stopped me from making content too was like I was so worried that I was going to copy someone else and get accused of copying their work or yeah. like taking their words. So yeah. I was like, I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> yeah. I guess like, I, so I used to think like, if you are going to copy me verbatim, I, I thought like you're taking my audience from me. Yeah. Like instead of them getting in my video ranking yeah. and getting where it deserves to be, because yeah. I'm the one that put that, you're getting it never really actually happened yeah that my biggest enemy has always been myself and yeah. l- allowing myself and to get it into those feels that way yeah and, and, and allowing myself to feel that way and mm-hmm. allowing myself to get into those you know dark 
mindset. Air, minds yeah. with myself. Yeah. And I think that that's, this is a great conversation to have, especially that I said, you know, everything's not perfect right now. We just have to get started and just yeah. do it. And any other creator that wants to start and do it and doesn't know where to start, just friggin' that's just That's how it is with going. most things. It's just like, take the jump. Even in life, even, yeah. even in your general life with somebody that doesn't make videos or anything yeah. like that, it's, it's... It relates to anything. Like, I even say yeah. it relates to working out, like, just start. Yeah. Start I tried to start, start somewhere. I tried to start. <laughs> yeah. Today had to be what, what's today? Remembrance Day. Remembrance Day. Nothing's open. I only started back at the gym two days ago. I'm really happy about it. Really excited. Feeling Mot- feeling motivated. Feeling yeah. good. I go today and it's closed for Remembrance Day. We can't. Everything's closed on Remembrance Day, but we can't celebrate it. We can't yeah, remember. They we had can't no gather. Ceremonies because of COVID. It was really weird going to Texas and everything wide open. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> I wish it was like that here. I it know was some weird. people aren't going to like it. Nobody had that, masks on. So when I got there. It depends on your view on it, I guess. Well, I had to get vaccinated get just Don't to go. Don't get me political. <laughs> I had to get vaccinated just to go there. I got to go. <laughs> oh, you know what? We probably can't talk about this stuff because YouTube's like yeah, I don't shadow want banning YouTube to anybody like that us. mentions this stuff. Yeah, so maybe we just do it. Instead, let's talk about my discovery of the ponytail tetra. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the bleeding heart tetra. I just saw one swim by. That tank needs like a bigger filter built within the next well before snowfall because all of the materials and all the supplies are outside um that and i'm the gonna snow build is with. apparently coming on um this coming wednesday and i'm not the fish ready. are doing fantastic they though. are like really they're, really they're, good they love it in there all the fish are doing great all of them i don't know where the discus went i don't think they made it long term i think that they were uh too small or too weak or um, those sub-rims are gorgeous it's ride or die in that tank, though. You find Survival the food, or the fittest, it's not going to work out for you. But everybody's everybody's nice and fat and voluptuous, and that's one of the things that I noticed at the uh, the Dallas World Aquarium oh, was yeah. all the fish were like really plump, plump. plump. Yeah. Well, I think we've gone long enough. I don't know how long it's been. Probably an hour or so. But um, we hit lots of topics. I feel like we had a good, like, diverse conversation. A lot of rambling. A lot of rambling. Now we uh, now we uh, offer our souls to the audience yeah and i really need it if you don't I like you guys like it. <laughs> but if not let us know what we need to do different yeah i mean I, I definitely need that feedback i mean we're just starting up the podcast again well hopefully it goes well i got some really interesting guests lined up and people i have planned some of them you have no clue who they are um and some of them y- you might have heard of them but uh you know, I like to have conversations with friends and people that I know, and yeah, because then the conversation just, just flows, flows a little easier. Yeah, yeah. Um, like right now, I feel like it's easier for me to talk to you because I obviously I know you pretty well by now. <laughs> but when we have a guest on, I get a little bit more shy, a little bit more nervous, just because I don't always know them. Yeah, personally. But I, I hope I think the plans moving forward is putting out a podcast two to three times a week is not sustainable. Not for me. Um, I think that I could do it once a week. And I posted a poll to my Instagram asking when people want it. Yeah. And uh, I haven't checked on it lately, but it was go- it's going to come down to like Thursday or Friday or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll Your see. Your end of the week pick me up. I think it could be end up being like Thirsty Thursdays <laughs> <laughs> or Fishy Fridays. <laughs> Who fishy knows? Fridays. Who knows? Uh yeah, there's tons of things, uh, other things I want to talk about, but I could literally ramble about everything out here for hours upon hours, and that's why I've been able to make videos for almost 14 years now. Yeah. I just have so much I want to talk so about. So much to say. I don't know. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Um, right now, uh, YouTube has this new beta program where if you comment, it will show me the time that you commented at it. And then it'll ship you a free be- beta fish. Mm. No. <laughs> no. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be... <laughs> so we've been out here too long. If you, if something happens in the podcast and uh, you comment at that time, it's a it's a better thing. Like it's a preliminary test. I don't know if it's for this cha- on this channel, but I can see it on my main channel. I can see when people are commenting. It just gives me the timestamp, hmm. so I can actually go watch it and see what they said yeah. and when they said it, and when they said it. So, so you can do that here too. I think um, if you want to be a supporter of this channel, you want to show us some love. We do now have the. YouTube supporter, I think it's like two bucks, um, two bucks a month, and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. I won't introduce that 149 again, uh, yeah. or 100, whatever it was. 
Um, but my apologies to the gentleman once again that uh, you know subscribed for so long, and there's no there's no history or track of any of it. Yeah. Um, and that's unfortunate. Hope you don't hate me. Uh, I appreciate the love and the support that we did get from you uh, greatly. It certainly helps out. And uh, anybody else that wants to continue to support, feel free to. I think we'll come up with some. Uh, we're going to come up with some merch and stuff. Oh, yeah. And I was going to say, we should get some merch, some Tank Mates merch. I think we need that. Yeah, because we do have some, like, hardcore fans. And I want to start wearing Tank Mates merch or, like, uh, aquariums only, unfiltered merch. Only fans. Only fans, yeah. <laughs> um, I do want to do quite a bit quite a bit of things with this podcast but i definitely want to make it consistent every week yes because i think well so here's here's a fun fact now that we've been doing the podcast like this i've noticed like other aquatic podcasts are trying to do the same thing because they realize that like Like unscripted yeah topic driven podcasts just don't do well they do okay but only for a certain amount of people it just doesn't feel as natural and it doesn't flow the same well it's rehearsed and it's you know it is what it is. I appreciate it. I did it before too. Yeah. I like this way more. It's way easier. And so long as everybody else likes it, I'll continue to, to do talk. it. <laughs> love to talk. I love talking. Sometimes in the last episodes, you might not have known it, but I do. Yeah. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Aquariums Unfiltered. My fellow tag mates, thanks for joining us. Thank you us. for being here. Once You're again, we'll chair. see you guys in the next <laughs> episode. It's probably going to be in a week from now. Whatever day you see this on is whatever Instagram voted for. So, See you then. Bye.